Hey everyone, today we're going to be figuring out how color changing glass works. You can see these glass rods here. This one's kind of yellowish clear, this one's yellow, and this one's kind of this bluish color. But now watch what happens when I change the lighting. So right now I'm just using these halogen bulbs, so it's an incandescent bulb. But then watch what happens when I switch it to a compact fluorescent bulb. These are the bulbs that look like this. Three, two, one. It immediately changes to these different colors. Look how cool this is. This went from yellow to pink. And this got orange and this went more like a violet color. Then switch it back. So how is this working? Depending on what light we're using, we're getting totally different colors out of these. So here's what they look like yellow. Then we can switch them. And they're now pink. Now this type of glass has several different names. They call it shifty glass or CFL glass. So to figure out what's going on here, first we need to figure out the difference between the light that comes from a compact fluorescent bulb like this one or an incandescent bulb like this one. And in order to see what type of light is coming off of this, we need something that's going to split up the light. Now to split up the light, you can use something like this prism here, but it's a little bit hard to show on camera using a prism like this because it's not very bright when it comes off it. A better thing to use to split up the light is a diffraction pattern like this one. So basically what this is going to do, it's going to take the light that's regularly bunched all together so we see white light and it's going to spread them out in angle a little bit. So it's going to spread them linearly away from each other so you can see the individual components of it a little bit better. So first let's look at a compact fluorescent bulb. You can see that the compact fluorescent bulb has pretty distinct red, green and blue wavelengths in it. Now let's look at our incandescent bulb. Okay, the incandescent bulb is way different than the compact fluorescent bulb. You can see that it's really continuous. With the compact fluorescent bulb, it almost looked like we were looking at three different bulbs, a red one, a green one, and a blue one. But with the incandescent bulb, it's kind of just this blur of a rainbow. Now this makes good sense because an incandescent bulb is just black body radiation, which means it's radiating all the different wavelengths of light. So you get the full visible spectrum coming off of it. But for a compact fluorescent bulb, it's not incandescent lighting. The light coming off of a compact fluorescent bulb is actually UV light that hit the white phosphor on the outside of the compact fluorescent bulb, and that gives off visible light. And so that phosphor has a specific spectrum to it. And you can see that it's not very continuous. There are some gaps in there, so it's not this continuous spread out rainbow. You can see when I overlay all three of them like this with the full visible spectrum at the bottom and the compact fluorescent bulb in the middle, you can see that there's kind of some gaps in the spectrum for the compact fluorescent bulb. Specifically, there's a gap kind of in this strong yellow range here. It's a little bit hard to tell because the bulb has some thickness to it, but if I just make lines of light, so I've cut out two slits here. On the top is the incandescent bulb and the bottom is the CFL bulb. You can notice how the incandescent bulb is really continuous and the CFL bulb has some definite gaps in it, especially right before green, right where yellow should be. There's a gap right there. So now we know the difference between the light coming off these two bulbs here, but that's only half of the puzzle. What about the absorption spectrum of this rod here? So what type of light can it absorb? Well, to look at its absorption spectrum, it's actually pretty simple as well. All we need to do is shine the incandescent light on it, and so the light needs to go through it, and then we need to look at it through our diffraction grating as well. So I'm going to use the incandescent bulb here because we know the incandescent bulb has all the visible wavelengths of light in it. So it's the fullest spectrum we can use to shine through this. And then we can compare it to the light coming off of the rod and see if there's any gaps in that spectrum. And we know that that's its absorption spectrum. So to do this, I'm just gonna put my light in a box here. And then on the other end of it, I'm gonna stick my glass rod through the box. So the light coming off the end of the rod here is the light that has completely passed through the rod. We have a little dot of light coming through this. Okay, I'm gonna hold up the diffraction pattern in front of it. Look at that. Let's move a little bit further back. Now we can begin to get the full story of what's going on here. So the spectrum that's coming off of the rod that turns from yellow to pink looks like this. These dark spots are where there's some really strong absorption bands. But you'll notice right in the middle around the yellow wavelengths, there's not really an absorption band there. So now let's overlay all of them together and show what happens when we shine each individual light on the glass rod. So with the incandescent light, when we shine it on the rod, you can see that these portions are going to be absorbed. 
so only these wavelengths of light are going to get through. So you have red, green, and yellow light, and that just makes yellow light, and then a little bit of blue, but not that much. So it's gonna mostly look yellow. But then when you shine the CFL light on it, you can see that you still have red and green light, which makes yellow light, but there's not a yellow portion of light as well, so you don't get that additional yellow. And then you can see that on the end, there's actually some violet that gets through. And what do you get when you mix a lot of red, a little green, and blue and violet together? You get a pinkish light or a magenta-ish color. So in order to get these glass rods to have a stark difference between compact fluorescent bulb and an incandescent bulb, you have to have specific absorption lines. If you just have something that can absorb in a broad wavelength, it's not going to look very different between the two. It'll look a little more yellowish in incandescent light, but it's not going to turn from yellow to pink in the two. Now we could repeat the same procedure for these other two and you'd see a similar reason why this one looks a little more purple and the other one looks a little more orange between the two bulbs. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out theactionlab.com if you haven't gone there yet. I sell two science boxes there. One is a mini vacuum chamber box and the other one is a self-pouring fluid box. And we're almost out of them. We're not going to be getting them back in stock again. So if you haven't got it yet, check it out now. And thanks again and I'll see you next time.